This DVD contains important information about your anaesthetic for your orthopaedic surgery. Before your surgery, we will ask you some questions to check your health. This will be at the pre-assessment clinic, or it may be by filling in a questionnaire. We will ask you about your general health and fitness, any serious illnesses you have had, previous anaesthetics, and if there were any problems known to you, and also ask you about any medicines, pills, inhalers or complementary medicines that you use. At the pre-assessment clinic, we will measure your height, weight and blood pressure, and we may take blood samples. We may also request further investigations such as a heart tracing, ECG or x-rays. On the morning of surgery, most people will meet the anaesthetist, the doctor who will be looking after you during your surgery. They will discuss with you about which type of anaesthetic is suitable for you. This is a good time for you to ask any questions and tell the anaesthetist about any worries that you have. It may be useful to write these down and bring them with you. There are several different types of anaesthetic. A spinal anaesthetic, a general anaesthetic, a nerve block or a combination of anaesthetics. For hip and knee surgery, the most common type of anaesthetic is a spinal anaesthetic. This is where we inject a measured dose of local anaesthetic near to the nerves in your lower back. You will go numb from the waist downwards. You feel no pain, but you remain conscious. If you prefer, you can also have medicines which make you feel sleepy and relaxed. This is called sedation. What are the advantages of a spinal anaesthetic compared to a general anaesthetic after your surgery? These are a lower risk of chest infections, your heart and lungs are less affected, a lower risk of bleeding occurring during surgery, which reduces your risk of needing a blood transfusion, a lower risk of blood clots forming in your legs, excellent pain relief immediately after surgery, and a lower need for strong painkillers, less sickness and vomiting. You can eat and drink sooner after surgery and the last advantage is there is less confusion after surgery in older people. Are there any disadvantages of a spinal anaesthetic? Yes, there are two. It is not suitable for patients with very severe heart disease or for patients with some blood disorders or who continue to take blood thinning medication. Common side effects of a spinal anaesthetic. The common side effects may be unpleasant, but we can treat these and they do not usually last long. They occur in around 1 in 10 to 1 in 100 patients. There are mainly four common side effects and we will now tell you what these are and what we can do to treat them. Low blood pressure. As the spinal anaesthetic takes effect, it can lower your blood pressure and make you feel faint or sick. We can control this with the fluids we give you via the drip and by giving you drugs to raise your blood pressure. Itching. This can occur as a side effect of using morphine-like drugs in combination with the local anaesthetic drugs we use in a spinal anaesthetic. If you experience itching, we can treat it as long as you tell the staff when it occurs. Difficulty passing water, medically known as urinary retention. You may find it difficult to empty your bladder normally for as long as the spinal anaesthetic lasts. Your bladder function will return to normal after the spinal anaesthetic wears off. You may require a catheter to empty your bladder on a temporary basis until the spinal wears off. Headache. There are many causes of headaches, including the anaesthetic, the operation, dehydration, which is lack of fluids, and anxiety. Most headaches get better within a few hours and we can treat these with painkillers. However, a severe headache can occur after a spinal anaesthetic. If this happens to you, you need to tell your nurse and they should ask the anaesthetist to come to see you. You may need special treatment to settle the headache. Now something about the rare complications of a spinal anaesthetic. Nerve damage is a rare complication of spinal anaesthesia. This can cause temporary loss of feeling, pins and needles, and sometimes muscle weakness that may last for a few days 
or even a few weeks, but almost all of these make a full recovery in time. Permanent nerve damage is even more rare, and paralysis due to nerve damage or infection has a 1 in 140,000 chance of occurring. Usually a spinal should cause you no unpleasant feelings and should take only a few minutes to perform. What will happen when I have a spinal anaesthetic? As the injection is made, you may feel pins and needles or a sharp tingle in one of your legs. If you do, try to remain still and tell your anaesthetist about it, as they may need to reposition the needle. When the injection is finished, you normally lie flat as the spinal anaesthetic works quickly and takes effect within five to 10 minutes. To start with, the skin feels numb to touch and the leg muscles are weak. When the injection is working fully, you will be unable to move your legs or feel any pain below the waist. During your surgery, we may give you oxygen to breathe via a lightweight clear plastic mask to improve oxygen levels in your blood. We will give you some sedation during your surgery, but you will be aware of some noise and movement. A general anaesthetic. For other types of orthopaedic surgery, or if you are not suitable for a spinal anaesthetic, we will give you a general anaesthetic. A general anaesthetic makes you unconscious and unable to feel pain. In other words, you are asleep. You will need a breathing tube in your throat whilst you are asleep to make sure that oxygen and anaesthetic gases can move easily into your lungs. When the surgery is finished, we stop the anaesthetic and you will gradually regain consciousness. Advantages of a general anaesthetic. You will be unconscious and pain-free during the surgery. Disadvantages. A general anaesthetic alone does not give you pain relief after the surgery. You will need strong painkillers afterwards, which can make some people feel quite sick or drowsy. Or you may wish to consider a nerve block with a general anaesthetic. A nerve block is an injection of local anaesthetic near the nerves which go to the part of your body which is being operated on. That part of your body should be numb and pain-free for some hours afterwards. You may also not be able to move it properly during that time. The nerve block injection may be done before the general or spinal anaesthetic starts. It may also be used as the sole anaesthetic, especially for surgery of the hand or foot. In this instance, you can also receive some sedation if you wish. Advantages of a nerve block. You usually need a lighter or no general anaesthetic at all, and you should be less sick and drowsy afterwards. This is because you will need less strong painkillers for several hours after your surgery. A nerve block alone may be the safest way to have your surgery if you have other serious health problems. Disadvantages of a nerve block. In around one in a hundred patients, the nerve block doesn't work very well. Your anaesthetist will always test the nerve block thoroughly and switch to an alternative anaesthetic if the nerve block is not fully effective. If this happens, we will also give you alternative painkillers to make sure you are comfortable. Very rarely, in around one in a hundred thousand cases, there can be permanent damage from a nerve block. Most people receive a combination of anaesthetics. You can have a nerve block with a general anaesthetic, sedation or a spinal anaesthetic. This should make you more comfortable for some hours after the operation than with a general anaesthetic or spinal anaesthetic alone. You can have a spinal with a general anaesthetic if your anaesthetist cannot perform the spinal anaesthetic satisfactorily. The spinal doesn't work satisfactorily or the surgery is more complicated than expected or it is likely to last longer than two to three hours. Delaying your operation. Occasionally your anaesthetist may suggest delaying your operation for a few weeks. This may be because they think that your health could be improved to reduce the risks of the surgery or the anaesthetic or it is because you need some more tests. It is possible that your anaesthetist will think there are very high risks. You may want time to think about whether to go ahead with the surgery. If they have concerns, then they will discuss these with you and your surgeon. 
we'll now go through some frequently asked questions. Can I eat and drink before a spinal anaesthetic or a nerve block? No, you will need to have an empty stomach before your surgery and you must follow the same rules as if you were going to have a general anaesthetic. This is because it is occasionally necessary to change from a spinal anaesthetic or nerve block to a general anaesthetic. You will be given clear instructions about fasting and which of your routine medications to take before your surgery. Must I stay fully conscious? Before the operation, you and your anaesthetist can decide together the amount of sedation you will require. The amount of sedation can be adjusted so that you are aware but you are not anxious. Will I see what's happening to me? No, normally a screen is placed across your upper chest so that you see nothing when surgery starts. You will be aware of the hustle and bustle of the operating theatre when you come in. Once surgery starts, noise levels drop and you will be able to relax with your nurse and your anaesthetist looking after you. Some patients like to wear personal headphones to listen to their own choice of music during the surgery. Do I have a choice of anaesthetic? Yes, your anaesthetist will assess your overall preferences and needs for the surgery and discuss them with you. If you have anxieties regarding the spinal anaesthetic, then they will answer these during your discussions. Depending on the type of surgery and your own medical condition, a spinal anaesthetic or nerve block may sometimes be safer for you and suit you better than a general anaesthetic. Can I refuse to have a spinal? Yes. If following discussion with your anaesthetist, you are still unhappy about having a spinal anaesthetic, you can always say no. You will never be forced to have any anaesthetic procedure that you don't want. Will I feel anything during the operation? Your anaesthetist will not permit surgery to begin until you are both convinced that the spinal or nerve block is working properly. We will test you several times to make sure of this. You should not feel any pain during the operation, but you may well be aware of other sensations such as movement or pressure as the surgical team carry out their work. If you do experience any pain or other abnormal sensations, you must tell the anaesthetist immediately and they will make adjustments to your care throughout the operation.